Um, good morning, everyone. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 24th annual general meeting of members of the Fiducian Group. My name is Indy Singh. I'm the executive chairman of the company. Today's meeting is being held online via the Lumi platform. This allows shareholders, proxies, and guests to attend the meeting virtually. All attendees can watch a live webcast of the meeting. And in addition, shareholders and proxies have the ability to ask questions and submit votes. I'd like to introduce you to individuals that are also in attendance. They are your directors, Robert Bucknell, Frank Khoury, and Sam Halab. In addition, we also have in attendance our general counsel and company secretary, Mr. Paul Jubeka, our group chief financial officer, Mr. Rahul Guha, and our company's auditor, Mr. Darren Ross from PricewaterhouseCoopers. They will be able to answer any questions relevant to them. So quorum and open meeting. It is past the appointed time of 10 a.m. And Mr. Jubeka has advised me that a quorum is present on the Lumi platform. And so I declare the meeting, which is to be held at a reasonable time and place convenient to shareholders, open. Questions can be submitted at any time. To ask a question, press on the speech bubble icon. This will open a new screen. At the bottom of that screen, there is a section for you to type your question. Once you have finished typing, please hit the arrow symbol to send in your question. Please note that while you can submit questions from now on, I will not address them until after we have put forward the financial report and resolutions for consideration at this meeting, after which we will address all questions together one after another. Please also note that your questions will be received by Mr. Paul Jubeka, General Counsel and Company Secretary, and may be moderated, or if we receive multiple questions of the same kind, they may be amalgamated. If due to time constraints, we run out of time to answer all your questions, and if this happens, we will answer them in due course and will post our responses on our website. There were 1,395 members registered as holding 31,442,623 shares at 10 a.m. on the 22nd of October, 2020. Those in attendance who have signed the register total 10 shareholders. The procedures for voting will be carried out in the following manner. One, as disclosed in the notice of meeting, voting today will be conducted by way of a poll on all items of business. Two, as a poll is being conducted, the minutes of this meeting will record the total number of proxy votes exercisable by all proxies validly appointed, the direction of the proxy forms, and the total votes in favor, total votes against, and total of abstentions in accordance with Section 251AA of the Corporations Act. If you are eligible to vote at this meeting, a new polling icon will appear. Selecting this icon will bring up a list of resolutions and present you with voting options. To cast your vote, simply select one of the options. There is no need to hit a submit or enter button as the vote is automatically recorded. You do, however, have the ability to change your vote up until the time I declare voting closed. I now declare voting open on all items of business. The polling icon will appear soon. Please submit your votes at any time. Voting will end within two minutes of the closure of the meeting. I will give you a warning 
before the closure of the meeting to remind you to cast your vote if you haven't yet. To inform you about proxies, Computer Share, the company's share registry, received 87 proxies, comprising 43.21% of the securities issued by the company and totaling 13 million. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Uh, I've just got an updated number. Uh, Computer Share, the, com the company's share registry, received 89 proxies comprising 49.52% of the securities issued by the company and totaling 15,567,902 shares, including those received electronically by 10 a.m. on 20th of October, 2020. Of those proxies, resolution one, that the remuneration report be adopted, <clears throat> there were 5,933,000 192 or 97.87 plus 0.88%, which totals 98.75 of eligible proxies cast are in favor of the motion. Resolution two to re elect Mr. Robert Bucknell as director 15,261,030 votes or 98.03% plus 0.34, which total 98.37% of eligible proxies are cast in favor of the motion. All proxy votes that have been cast at the discretion of the executive chairman will be voted for the resolutions. No proxies have been declared invalid. Notice of meeting has been circulated to shareholders and sets out the purpose of the meeting being to discuss the financial report, adopt the remuneration report, re-elect Robert Bucknell as a director, deal with other business in accordance with the company's constitution, the Corporations Act 2001, and no notices have been received in respect of other business. Having set out the business within the notice of meeting, the notice of meeting is taken as read. Now, minutes of previous shareholder meetings, the copies of the minutes of the AGM for 2019 of Fiducian Group Limited were reviewed and signed at the next meeting of directors. Shareholders may request a copy of the minutes from the company secretary if you wish to see them. The financial report. The first item of notified business is the consideration of the financial report for the year ended 30th June, 2020. The consolidated financial report and the reports of the directors and auditor were made available on both the Fiducian and ASX websites and issued to shareholders on request. Before dealing with the report though, I would like to give a short review of the progress and outlook for the group. Mm. And this is the chairman's address for the 24th annual general meeting of Fiducian Group on 22nd of October, 2020. As chairman and on behalf of the directors, I'm pleased to present this report on the consolidated operating performance of Fiducian Group Limited and its controlled entities for the year ended 30th of June, 2020. At the outset, I must thank the board, senior management, and all our staff who have stood together and supported the company through the COVID-19 crisis, something none of us has experienced before in our lives. The highlights, I can start by saying the 2018-19 year brought significant disruption to financial services businesses. Globally, from the Brexit and the US-China trade war, and then as well, from home with the federal election and the Royal Commission. The 2019-20 year just gone by has brought its own issues with COVID-19. There was strong growth in the first half of this financial year leading into the first two months of calendar 2020. 
and we were projecting a strong result. Then came the coronavirus, which forced large-scale business closures and a sharp 35% stock market decline in March 2020. A new term, resiliency, was coined for business. This is the ability of a business to absorb external shocks and come out better than the competition. It is the key to survival and long-term prosperity of businesses in uncertain times, as such companies have business models that make them better prepared and able to take effective action. The last two years have proven that fiduciary model is on the right track and can still deliver positive results for shareholders, while at the same time taking care of its people and supporting the community. Governments across the world were taken by surprise at the ferocity with which businesses were shutting down and announced massive stimulus packages in a matter of months, which in some cases is 10 times the amount spent over three to five years during the global financial crisis. How this money will be repaid by citizens is a question for another time. However, for now it has helped people to survive. The crisis management team of the company meets twice a week to oversee the situation and plan for any issues which may impact the business. Its foremost priority is the safety, health, well-being, and security of all our staff and associates that comprise the fiduciary family. Within a few days of the government announcing lockdown measures, a pandic pandemic response plan was put into action to ensure continuation of a seamless service to our clients and stakeholders. I'm pleased to advise that all our people, the heart and soul of our business are safe. All staff are able to work from home. A remarkable achievement was by our IT team, which worked late into the night to ensure connectivity and even delivered Surface Pro tablets to homes where needed. The dedication and contribution by senior management, staff, and financial planners has been nothing short of exemplary. They have worked long hours and modified their work processes to deliver on business deliverables. Financial planners have stepped up the client contact and communication by phone and video conferencing to ensure that clients continue to receive quality advice. The client administration team for our platforms has delivered seamless service without any disruption to our clients. All service level standard requirements have been met and in cases needed. No one has been retrenched laid off or had the remuneration reduced. This should assist with staff retention of skilled staff. And I think the board is proud of this. For the hard work, all staff are rewarded with a salary increase for the coming year and bonuses equal to what they received last year or as for their employment terms. Despite the severe share market decline in March, flagship Flagship diversified fusion funds have maintained the superior rankings on the Morningstar survey compared with up to 197 recognized fund managers in their peer groups. This includes the last 12 months and even going back over the last 10 years and more. Funds have also shown a good recovery after the March decline. Cost controls, efficient working methods, and our resilience to external shocks have shown that we can still deliver earnings per share growth for shareholders, maintain dividend payments, and also keep our staff happy, clearly against the trend for the financial services industry. This is in spite of the fact that FUMAA, which is Funds Under Management Advice and Administration, at 30th June 2020, is a little lower than February 2020, due to the reported share market volatility. Net inflows in the difficult second half of this financial year were actually 36% higher than the first six months of the year. We believe 
that eventually share markets will recover, employment will return, the world will come to a new normal, and we will continue to operate through simpler, cost-controlled, and more efficient technology-driven methods. The board, management, and staff therefore remain optimistic for superior growth and a continuation of steady, well-managed expansion over the next three to five years. The 2020 financial performance of the group. <clears throat> there are bullet points which I'll read out. The net inflows for the financial year grew by 107% or up to 217 million, while 2019 was $105 million of net inflows. Net revenue from ordinary activities increased by 10% from 36.7 million to 40.2 million, while gross margin was steady at 73%. Underlying net profit after tax, which is a better reflection of the group's cash generating ability, rose by around 6% from 12 million to 12.725 million. Management's mandate is to keep growing revenue, but to grow profits for shareholders at a faster rate. Basic earnings per share on statutory net profit after tax rose by 1% from 33 cents to 33.3 cents after making adjustments for the new accounting standard for leases and a higher tax rate of 30%, while 2019 was 27.5%. Statutory cash operating expenses were controlled, but increased by 7%, mainly due to new staff absorbed following the acquisition of the MyState Bank retail financial planning client base in Tasmania. The dividend payment remains consistent with the board strategy of paying between 60% and 70% of net profit after tax, unless there are other compelling reasons not to, such as retaining free cash to grow the business or make acquisitions. The payout was 23 cents per share, an increase by 3.1% over the previous year, which is against the trend followed by most financial services businesses in the current environment. Combined funds under management, administration and advice, FUMAA, rose from 7.4 billion last year to 8 billion at 30th of June, 2020 an increase of 8% after absorbing the big share market decline experienced in March this year. And a key feature of the company is that it has a strong balance sheet and currently remains debt-free with a positive working capital and cash flow position. About financial planning, during the year, funds under advice grew to 3 billion. In 2019, there were 2.7 billion mainly due to acquisitions of financial planning businesses and increases in net inflows. Fiducian expects the highest level of compliance and client service from his financial planning network, and regulatory oversight and supervision has therefore been increased. Our financial planners continue to deliver superior quality advice through webinars and video conferencing. As a result, client retention remains high and many grandparents, we note, are happily learning new internet skills. Salaried offices comprise over 50.5% and franchised offices comprise the balance 49.5% of funds under advice. Further acquisitions are being planned and negotiated as I speak. For platform administration, it offers portfolio wrap administration for superannuation and investment services to financial planners, as well as separately managed accounts. We believe that our capability and systems enhancements give us the ability to readily compete for such business and negotiations are underway with prospects who could use our services for administration of their SMAs. From September 2020, we modified the administration fees, which were reduced so that they fell within the bottom half of the fees of like-for-like like competing platforms. As is the trend in the industry now, transaction and asset holding fees were introduced. To give complete transparencies, investors will be able to drill down through Fiducian Online, our online reporting module, 
and view every single listed security that they hold anywhere in the world through the fiducian funds. Funds under administration were adversely impacted by the falls in share markets across the world in March 2020. But funds under administration still stands at 2.2 billion, up 6.3% over the 2019 balance of 2.1 billion. Superannuation on superannuation. The trust, superannuation trustee board established for a public offer superannuation wrap fund in March 2015 with equal independent directors, operates professionally and with independence. The board is supported by the Office of Superannuation Trustee and outsources key operational processes list service providers. The federal government had legislated an early release from superannuation scheme to assist Australians who have had a reduction in their income due to the COVID-19 crisis. The withdrawals from fiduciary superannuation have been approximately $2 million in total, which is negligible in the scheme of things. And funds under management. Our in-house manage the manager system of investment continues to attract the majority of retail funds placed with us. Fiducian funds have performed well over the medium to long term in their respective categories as we diversify their assets through a range of underlying fund managers to reduce risk and volatility. Since inception some 20 years ago, the performance of these funds to end June 2020 as reported in the Morningstar Investment Performance Survey has been commendable. The returns of our flagship diversified funds have recovered strongly, as, as at end August, we had several number one rankings against all Australian and international fund managers represented on recognized performance surveys over the last 10 years. On other services that we provide, they are provided by finance, legal and compliance, business development and distribution, marketing and risk management managers and their team, and they are hardly or rarely noticed or considered. However, I must report that these persons have done a marvelous job under pressure from COVID-19 and supported all business activities effectively. The Planners Council, IT and platform user groups have voluntarily participation by managers and financial planners. There have been a great sounding board for the group and the feedback is valued. The executive leadership team of senior managers comprises our general counsel and the executive chairs of funds management, financial planning, finance, and business development who directly report to me. They along with other senior managers have provided great ideas for strategic development and operational support through the year. Through the year, staff of Fiducian voluntarily assisted the administration of Vision Beyond Oz, a charity that has helped restore eyesight through free eye surgery of almost 41,000 men, women, and children who live in poverty in India, Myanmar, Cambodia, Ethiopia, and Nepal. As well, Vision Beyond Oz has funded the eye screening of 8,000 children living in rural areas of Nepal. <clears throat> While COVID-19 restrictions have forced a slowdown in activity, we continue to support hospitals in these countries as needed. The board remains cautious, but confident that subject to an improving economic and financial market environment in Australia and internationally, along with the hard work of all staff, a strategy of delivering continued growth can be achieved. I thank all our staff, members of various committees, stakeholders, subsidiary board directors, and the Fiducian Group Board for their hard work and support to the company. In particular, I thank all our shareholders for their trust and confidence in Fiducian and assure them that we are all working hard to ensure that shareholder and community expectations are met into the future. So that was my presentation. Now, please provide your questions via the Lumi platform 
and we will address them shortly. We will now move to the next, the next item of business. The adoption of the remuneration report, resolution one. The remuneration report is set out in the 2020 annual report on pages 18 to 24. The vote on this resolution is advisory only and does not bind the directors or the company. However, I note that pursuant to the Corporations Act, if 25% or more of votes that are cast are voted against the adoption of the remuneration report at two consecutive annual general meetings, shareholders will be required to vote at the second AGM on a resolution called a spill resolution for another meeting to be held within 90 days of the second AGM at which all of the company's directors other than the executive chairman must stand for re-election. The following ordinary re resolution is proposed in the notice of meeting. That the remuneration report is adopted. Please ensure again that you have voted on the LUMI platform and we will now move to the next item of business. The next item, resolution two, is elect Mr. Robert Bucknell as a director. The next resolution concerns the re-election of Mr. Robert Bucknell as a director of the company. His personal details are included in the notice of meeting. The following motion is to be passed as an ordinary resolution. That Mr. Robert Bucknell being a director, retiring by rotation, and being eligible for re-election, is re-elected as a director of the company. Again, I remind you to please ensure that you have voted on the LUMI platform. Other general business. No notices have been received to deal with other business in accordance with the company's constitution and the Corporations Act 2001. Questions. As there are no other businesses, we will turn to our questions that have been posted on the LUMI plan. Our company secretary, Paul Jubeka, will now read out the questions posted. Mute. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, technology. Um, so there is one question that I have received, and that question is, um, are we able to have an update on FUMA, F-U-M-A-A, at the end of quarter one, uh, inflows holding near the improved levels of H220? Thanks. What was the second part of the question for? Uh, inflows holding near the improved levels of the second half to, of the financial year of 2020. Yes, we can, and we do have the numbers. Uh, Mr. Guha will just tell me. That FUM AA has already risen to 8.5 billion. And the inflow levels are 33 million net over the quarter. Very good. Are there any other questions? No. no. There are no other questions at the moment. Um, I don't see any other questions coming, and there's just been one. So there being no further questions, uh, that concludes the business of the meeting. Uh, I again remind you to uh, ensure that you have voted on the LUMI platform and voting will end at the end of around two minutes following the closure of this meeting. The outcome of the resolutions will be lodged 
with the ASX as soon as practicable after the closure of voting. I can ask once again if there are any other questions that have come through. Oh, yes. there is one more question. No, it's just a thank you. That's it. So there's no more questions. Um, thank you for your attendance. And the meeting is now closed at 10.30 a.m. So you have two minutes more if you wish to vote.